When first introduced to uh, Ferox fuel additive, I thought it was a joke because we had tried so many others. Most products on the market are totally disappointing. I mean, we received, uh, I'd say, 95, 96% of them, we achieved no results whatsoever. No measurable results. Two other products we, we tried uh, did reasonably well. The closest product to the Ferox performed 45% less than what we got out of the Ferox. Under, under the same engines, under the same ambient temperatures, basically all the conditions were the same. Ferox outperformed at 45%. It's all off the computer. What you see is what you get. You want to compare apples to apples. So you'll run a baseline run with regular fuel, whatever you've been running. After you establish the baseline horsepower, uh, miles per hour in the air fuel ratio, you shut the engine down, let it cool back to the original temperature. That's critical, so that way you're, you're comparing, you know, like I said, apples to apples. <clears throat> then you go ahead and put the ferox in. Let it circulate to be safe, say 15 minutes. And that's sitting on the dyno at approximately 60 miles an hour. That gives the uh, ferox fuel mixture time to reach the combustion chamber in the engine. You shut the engine back down. Two reasons. One, you're letting it cool again. You disconnect the negative terminal on the battery. When you disconnect the negative terminal on the battery, it forces the ECM to seek instruction out of the memory. When the battery is reconnected and the engine is restarted, then the computer has to read. In other words, the first section of the computer basically is blank. It's taken analog input, converts it to uh, digital input, then it seeks information. As that information is supplied to it, it's adjusting the sensor input. It'll adjust the uh, injector pulse width. It will in adjust the timing. Now, in the case of what we'll call a uh, variable geometry turbo, it will adjust the vanes in the turbo to compensate. It recognizes the ferox is in the system. So it takes less fuel for that engine to perform the same task. Now, if you run that engine up all the way, you will see the increase in horsepower. You will see a slight variation in the air fuel ratio until the computer adjusts, and you will see a definite increase in miles per hour. So what that amounts to is that engine will perform the same task, the same speed, with less fuel. That's where your savings comes into play. But you have to follow procedure. If you do not disconnect the negative cable, some of the uh, systems are set so it takes 150 starts before that computer will seek instruction. And until it seeks instruction and adjusts for the changes in the nature of the fuel, it won't do a thing. It will not adjust the turbo, it will not adjust the timing, it will not adjust the injector pulse width. So all we're doing is by disconnecting the negative, we're forcing it to do something immediately that would naturally occur so many starts in the future. This way you get instant results and you're not tied up on the dyno day after day after day. In other words, we can achieve, say, in one hour, what might normally take a month, depending on how many times that engine started during that period. And it's really that simple. We've been in business uh, in the automobile, automobile industry for over 22 years. So based on all the five runs, looking between a 35 and 40 horsepower gain, that's a dramatic increase, okay. just out of appeal. As much as 10 horsepower gain to the rear wheels can make a big difference. I 
I've done everything from drift cars to uh, you know building drift cars to building cars for Donald Chrysler. At one time, back in 2005, I built 13 uh, Donald Chrysler vehicles. I built cars on contractual basis for companies like GoFast Energy, McGuire's, Han Racecraft, um, and then I also help people that are trying to get into the into the actual SEMA scene and, and promoting the vehicles, uh, getting them sponsorships. Um, and then any vehicle that I, that I have keys for, I, I build up. Uh, we're using the Dyno Dynamics chassis dyno. Um, it's pretty sensitive. It uses an electric motor, um, so it applies the resistance on the actual rollers. Um, because it's so sensitive, we can actually dyno motorcycles and you know mopeds if you want. vitamin pill. I was real skeptical. Uh, John called me uh, about a week ago and said he wanted to come do some dyno tests and I figured oh it's just another one of those you know I've seen on TV type of companies but they're paying for dyno time. Um, basically what they did uh, they came here brought the car we did three base runs on the dyno. Um, did, the car did about 240 horsepower. Um, John got a can of gas, mix one of these little pills in there. Uh, we put the, the gas in the car, uh, ran it for about 15 miles, disconnected the battery, uh, ran it for 15 miles again, and we did three more dyno pulls and gained 13 horsepower. Um, we've seen a lot of companies come here and test products and it showed no gain at all in our dyno, so uh, seeing the 13 horsepower gain from, from just adding this thing was, was pretty amazing. It runs a gamut from just regular fuel efficient cars to race cars. Uh, not only are you gaining at the fuel pump, you're also going to be gaining horsepower uh, down the road. 